This video will be an overview of the vertebrate brain. The first thing we're going to talk about is arousal and sleep. Arousal is a state of awareness of the external world, meaning we are consciously perceiving what is going on around us. Sleep is basically the opposite. External stimuli are received, but we do not consciously react to them. It may come as a surprise, but we can actually switch between these states rapidly. Both of these states are controlled by the brainstem and cerebrum. Arousal and sleep are mainly controlled by something called the reticular formation. This is a network of neurons in the core of the brainstem. It works by controlling what information reaches the cerebrum. If more information is reaching the cerebrum, we are awake. If less information is reaching the cerebrum, then we are asleep. Pons in the medulla stimulate sleep in the midbrain causes arousal. We will learn more about these parts of the brain later. Sleep is actually an active state. Even though we may not consciously be active, the brain is still receiving information from throughout the body and reacting to maintain homeostasis. Sleep is essential for survival, but we really are not sure why exactly it's needed. Some believe, since the centers for memory and learning are the most active while we are asleep, that it plays some part in helping us remember what we learned during the day. All birds and mammals show cycle of being asleep and being awake. Melatonin is a hormone produced by the pineal gland. It seems to play an important role in sleep, but we are not exactly sure about its purpose. We see adaptations in some mammals that allow them to stay alive. In the case of the bottlenose dolphin, they have adapted the peculiar ability to only sleep with one half of the brain at a time. This ability allows them to con continue to go to the surface of the ocean for air even when they are sleeping. The cerebrum is the largest part of, our, of the brain and is the control center for many of our voluntary actions. These include movement, learning, memory, perception, and it plays a role in emotion. It is divided into left and right hemispheres just like the cerebral cortex, a part of the cerebrum vital for perception, some voluntary movement, and learning. The left hemisphere controls the right side of the body and vice versa. Also in the cerebrum, basal nuclei are the centers for planning and learning movement sequences, like walking. The cerebellum is used in more subconscious actions like movement and balance and it aids in remembering and learning motor skills. Instead of making the decision on what to do, the cerebellum calculates what the body needs to do to accomplish the task by taking in specific information. Also the cerebellum monitors motor commands and makes corrections for errors in motor and visual functions. Hand-eye coordination is one thing that is controlled in this manner by the cerebellum. You consciously tell your body to catch a ball with the cerebrum and then your cerebellum calculates what needs to be done in order to accomplish this task. We do not have to consciously make these calculations, our brain does it automatically. The diencephalon includes the thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus. The thalamus is the main input center for sensory information that is going to the cerebrum. This information is sorted in the thalamus and sent to the right part of the cerebrum for processing. The hypothalamus is known as the thermostat and biological clock. It controls the pituitary gland to regulate hun hunger and thirst, plays a role in sexual and mating behaviors, and controls the fight or flight response. The epithalamus includes the pineal gland which produces melatonin that we talked about earlier. The brainstem contains the midbrain pons and the medulla oblongata, which is usually shortened to just the medulla. The midbrain receives and uses several types of sensory information that is sent to the forebrain. Any audio information is either terminated in, at the midbrain or is sent to, on to the cerebrum. The midbrain also controls visual reflexes like the peripheral vision reflex, which helps us react when we see something coming at us in our peripheral vision. We don't have to think move. Our body automatically does it for us. The medulla and pons coordinate large-scale body movements like running and swimming and also control many automatic homeostatic fun functions. These include breathing and heart and blood vessel activity, swallowing, vomiting, and digestion. Biological clock regulation, as we learned earlier, is mainly controlled by the hypothalamus. We undergo something known as circadian rhythm, which is the daily cycle of biological activity. So we generally get tired at the same time, get hungry at the same time, and things like that. The bio biological clock is a molecular mechanism that directs periodic gene expression and cellular, cellular activity. This generally happens in 24-hour cycles. We know it is controlled by the hypothalamus, but more specifically, it is controlled by a group of neurons called the super chiasmatic nucleus or SCN. Emotion depends on many different parts of the brain including the amygdala, hippocampus, and parts of the thalamus. These parts border the brainstem which is why they are called the limbic system, limbic meaning border in Latin. The limbic system is also used for motivation, sense of smell, behavior, and memory. Laughing and crying use the limbic system as well as the cerebrum. The forebrain and limbic system are involved in survival related feelings, such as aggression, feeding, and sexuality. The amygdala stores emotional memories.